slave to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. Before we dive into this powerful episode, please remember to subscribe to our channel and give us a five-star rating on iTunes and continue hustling. This episode is sponsored by Imaging Services, Cairo Health USA, Cairo Moguls, Chiropractic Rocks, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, doTERRA, Sherman College of Chiropractic, New Patients in a Box, the Influencer Authority Podcast Training, and Invisared. Let's hustle. Hey guys, welcome to episode 369 of the Cairo Hustle Podcast. I'm your co-host, Luke Millette, and here's your host, James Chester. So today we had the opportunity of interviewing Christy Hudson. And if you want to hear about Cairo Health USA and how they support the chiropractic profession, stay tuned. Welcome back. This is another episode of the Cairo Hustle Podcast. This is a really special one. It's episode 369. We have Christy Hudson coming in from Flowood, Mississippi. And uh, my co-host, Luke Millette, is out there in uh, the city of trees, Ann Arbor, Michigan. And uh, I, your host, Jim Chester, I'm out here in beautiful Grand Junction, Colorado. And before we jump into episode 369, I just let everybody know why we do what we do. Um, we protect free speech and chiropractic. We uh, protect the sacred trust. If you don't know what that is, go do some uh, search engine on that. And uh, we do support subluxation-based chiropractic and innate intelligence. And uh, yeah, we, we uh, do our best to uh, document the profession of chiropractic with these interviews. And uh, here we are with episode 369, Christy Hudson. Welcome to the show. Hi, y'all. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 great. And you guys have been a huge contributor sponsor with Cairo Health USA for, um, I think, over two years now. So thank you for doing that. It's our pleasure. We went from fans to sponsors. Yeah, you know it's 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 very important to us uh, to to build those brand alliances too to make the profession stronger. But I knew you guys were always doing stuff to support the profession from, you know, the front lines from the sidelines, and you guys are always doing work behind the scenes to make sure that the chiropractic profession was supported. And um, I guess this is something really cool to share with our audience today because I don't know what's going on or how you got to where you are today, but it seems like you've worked with Dr. Ray Fox, uh, Dr. Ray for, uh, gosh, how long? Almost 13 years. <laughs> I was their very first employee that they hired for the company. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. And 13 years later, um, maybe you can catch us up to speed on how you've transitioned from day one to year 13. Well, so I was hired and we were such a small, small company um, that I even answered the phones in his clinic because there wasn't <laughs> enough time for me to to fill my day. Um, and I started, I really, all I did was check the mail and I would process patient memberships. In the very beginning, I would help book his travel Occasionally, I would go pick up his dry cleaning just because <laughs> he was busy with patients <laughs> um, while I was on my way to the mailbox. And then now um, I went from his administrative assistant to the vice president of business relations. We have a team of almost 20. And, you know, it's incredible. Nobody actually sits there and processes payments anymore because it's all done online now. And it's just incredible to see how much we've grown from less than 200 providers around the country utilizing the program and who knows, 20,000 patients to over 5,000 um, chiropractors utilizing the program and over a million families who have a membership with Cairo Health USA to get affordable chiropractic care. Yeah, that's really interesting to me. That's a huge, in, in marketing, we call that a hockey stick. You guys go from 200 to 5,000. What did you guys do to make that happen? Um, we went to a lot of events and talked to people <laughs> face to face about our program. And um, in the very beginning, uh, Dr. Ray was speaking at conventions and talking about the need for a program like ours within the chiropractic profession. And he was talking about compliance and really people didn't really know a lot about compliance at that time. I mean, we knew that, you know, about HIPAA compliance, but not compliance when it came to how you were billing and coding and your financial policies and how they were a huge area of risk for the profession. 
Um, and he would get up on stage and he would talk about it and he would tell his own story. It's not like he got up one day and thought, you know, I have this great practice. I'm working full time. And um, I think I want to start a whole nother business. It really came out of necessity when um, he had had a patient he'd been treating for over a decade and the whole family and they were cash patients and he'd been charging his cash fee. And then she was in an automobile accident. He started billing her actual fees. Well, a couple of things happened. He went in to treat her one day and she was mad, like angry. Um, and she told him, it's docs like you ripping off insurance companies that prevent me and my family from being able to afford insurance. And she walked out that day. Um, and she'd been paying out of pocket to have her, her husband and her two kids treated for over a decade. She never came back to the office again. We don't know if she ever got chiropractic care again. And I think to me, a, that part of the story is the most heartbreaking because it was, he was trying to help her and it may have turned her off to chiropractic care, but she also reported him to the board of examiners in the state attorney general's office. And that's when he learned about financial compliance and everything he was doing wrong, but it wasn't just him. It was everybody he knew. <laughs> so, wow. So, so what are some things uh, in the future for Cairo Health USA? What are some big things that you have coming up that uh, you're excited about? Oh, goodness. You know, I think that just our continued support of the chiropractic profession, um, we're very much involved in the future of chiropractic strategic plan, which is the profession's plan. It's not... Um, ran or held by any organization. It's with leaders within the profession who are trying to move chiropractic forward. Um, we're super excited about that. You know, hopefully along the lines, expanding the scholarship to be able to help more students get access to affordable um, chiropractic education. And, um, you know, and just continuing to grow the, the network so that more and more patients can have access to affordable chiropractic care. So let's talk about that scholarship. Um, I know it's something really cool that you guys have rolled out to help uh, within the profession. So um, who is it helping and how did you guys get that thing going? I attended an event and I wish I could remember, but there were a lot of chiropractic students there. And this was, I don't know, seven, eight years ago. And I will never forget one of the students talking about they were about to graduate and they just realized the balance of their student loans. And I didn't have an, any idea that chiropractic school was so expensive. <laughs> and they were talking about how there just weren't a lot of scholarships. So I came back to the office and I'm telling uh, Dr. Foxworth this story because I was just heartbroken for this student. Um, and wondering how they were going to pay this. And it's like, you know, we, I want to start a scholarship. And I was like, can we just do like a thousand dollars? You know, it's like something, anything is better than nothing. Mm -hmm. Right. And so he and I sit there and we talk about it for about 20 minutes, 20 minutes later, it went from a thousand dollars to $20,000 that one student was going, uh, that would 10,000 would go to the student's tuition. 10,000 would be a donation to the school to use however they saw fit. By year two, it went to 25000 and the student gets 5000 in cash in addition to the 10000 for tuition. And so we've, six students have received the scholarship so far. Our seventh recipient will be announced in August. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited about it. A lot of the schools have utilized the $10,000 to create more scholarship money for their students on campus. Some of them have utilized it to update the clinic, the student clinic at on campus um, to invest in, they've invested in research. Like it's been used for so many different things. Um, Palmer, Florida had a student win last year and they used it to full, uh, finish fully funding their endowment scholarship fund so that they were able to start issuing scholarships from that fund a couple of months later after it was awarded. That's awesome. So uh, everyone's thinking, how do they apply for these scholarships? <laughs> oh, it's easy. You just go to chusa, C -H -U -S -A, scholar com. The deadline is April the 30th. It asks you three questions. Um, why did you decide to become a chiropractor? 
what do you intend? How do you intend to have an impact on the chiropractic profession? Um, the third one I think is about someone who's influenced you um, in, in your life. And it can, it's a per, you know, it doesn't have to be about chiropractic and you have to have one letter of recommendation, which is not even a letter. It, you put in their name and email address. It sends them, um, just a little form to fill out and answers a couple of questions about you. The really cool thing is I think the first year that we did it, I think we had like maybe 150 people apply for it. Now we get, you know, four, five, 600 students who apply for it. And we have, our panel of experts, because it's not like we pick, we don't help narrow it down, but they come from ICA, ACA, FCLB, NBCE, the Cairo Congress, Clinical Compass, like all of the acronyms, all the ABCs of chiropractic, all of these leaders within the profession, each one of them um, nominates one person or elects one person to help in that process. And then they narrow it down and it's a scoring system. So even they don't know how it's scored based on how they answer the questions. And then as it turns out, we have 10 to 12 people every year that have a perfect score from that process. And then they all go to Dr. Ray's daughter, Reagan, and she and her grandparents are now her grandfather read those and then they make a selection because the scholarship was named in honor of his parents who were both chiropractors. Wow. And then, uh, sorry if you mentioned this already, how many people get the scholarship? Is it just one? Just one. Just and I one. want to, ho I hope to expand it. But I will say that in our business relationships and all the amazing people that we get to meet within the profession, um, like we have some pretty incredible partners that we work with that are other chiropractic vendors. And but to be a partner, not only do you have to be an incredibly ethical company and go through a huge vetting system, but you have to be supporting and contributing financially to the future of chiropractic somehow. One of the ways, either by supporting one of these charitable organizations, supporting research, or starting a scholarship of your own. So more scholarships are now available almost a decade later than there were when we started because we helped them to set up that foundation to give back. So shifting gears just a little bit, what would be three pieces of advice you'd give to every chiropractor if you could? Ooh, three pieces of advice that I'd give to every chiropractor. Um, one, hire wisely. Like I would take more time to find the right person than bringing in the wrong person. Having the right team behind you will definitely be, I mean, ha, whatever team you hire is going to be the success or failure of your business. Absolutely. Um, number two, I would say invest not only in yourself um, educationally, but in the team that you have working with you. Um, you can always learn more and do more. Um, read. My, some of my most successful chiropractic offices that I work with have, must have like book club. And they read incredible books like The Five Dysfunctions of a Team, and then they discuss it. Or um, some of them have even read 75 Strong, you know, and they read these books to help them all grow together. And then number three is work-life balance. Like if being a single chiropractor in an office, like I wish more would have associates because your financial freedom is tied to you being in your office all the time, which means you have no freedom and you have to take time off, like go on vacation with your family, be able to go to your kids events and sporting events. Like you have to have a life outside of your chiropractic office. So take that time and set yourself up to be able to do that. You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. This episode is sponsored by Imaging Services, Cairo Health USA, Cairo Moguls, Chiropractic Rocks, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, doTERRA, Sherman College of Chiropractic, New Patients in a Box, the Influencer Authority Podcast Training, 
and Invisared. Let's hustle. Yeah, I really like what you said there. Um, I, I, I use the, the, the phrase of pay the most and cry once. And uh, I think that if more people would just invest in great, great associates or great help or great partners, um, they wouldn't feel like they're alone. And I'm sure you've seen that time and time again, where um, it's a solopreneur trying to do it all and they don't know how to be compliant. So they don't know what Cairo Health USA is really doing. And then they connect with you guys and they're like, wow, this is more fun. Now I have a financial team that supports me. And then they start building components off of that. And the next thing you know, they're having more fun. And because they're connected with you guys, I'm sure that they're getting resources and connection with other people that can support them in their business ventures. And um, they're not just a solopreneur now. They have uh, resources and teams that support them. And I think that, you know, you probably have seen that time and time again where somebody's out there drifting at sea and then they join the Chusa family. And before they know it, they're plugged in and they're having more fun with uh, their career. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think everyone who works at Cairo Health has letters or emails on bulletin boards. I have boxes of letters that came from practices that we helped. Um, they were on the brink of closure. And now am I saying that Cairo Health USA is what kept them open? Absolutely not. But connecting with us and guiding them, because I feel like probably 90% of what we do has very little to do like 90% of those conversations have nothing to do with Cairo Health. Um, it's just part of it. Um, you know, we help them to connect with other people in their area who are going, who are new providers and they need somebody to talk to. We help them to connect with different coaches or a consultant that can help them with a very specific problem in their office. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so Cairo Health USA is more like the hub. It's the hub. <laughs> it's like the best <laughs> club you can be a part of. <laughs> so talk a little bit about the outreach you guys do, because I know you guys do go to a, a ton of events yes. and uh, talk about that. And I know that was one of the early fundamentals that you guys started implementing. You guys still stick with it. We do. We do. Um, you know, in the beginning there, well, it was Dr. Ray and I, and we would go to as many events as the two of us could go to. Um, and then over the years, we've added more. And so this year, we'll do over 60 events. Um, Pre-COVID, we were doing between 80 and 100 events with four to five people who would travel. And we love in-person events. Like we want to be there face to face. We want to get to meet the doctors that we serve in this profession. And I don't mean just the doctors who are part of our network, not those 5,000 plus, like all of the chiropractic profession. We want to be there. We want to help you. We want to guide you. We want to connect you with other people, like-minded people to help you in your journey. We want to connect with your team, offer them the free resources that we have um, so that they can be better, more efficient. And again, like you said, have fun in practice. Because if you lose that, when you lose that, then it just becomes a job. And that's not why anybody became a chiropractor. Well, Grant Cardone says a job stands for just over broke. And we don't want uh, our chiropractic brothers and sisters to be just over broke. We want them to have fun, like you said, and a thriving platform that they can be plugged into. Absolutely. You know, I tell people all the time that I want to pinch myself regularly. I can't believe I get paid to do what I do. Like if something happened and they couldn't pay me tomorrow, I would show up for work because I love my job. I, you know, I love what I get to do every day. I love the people that I work with. I love this profession. And it's just mind boggling to me that this is a job that I get paid for every day. And I get up in the morning and don't get me wrong. There are days where Everybody has. There's like, I just can't do this today. Mentally, I'm just not there. But most of the time, I can't wait to grab my suitcase, jump on a plane, go to an event, and immerse myself in all things chiropractic. Well, if I ever go without work, I'm going to email you and say, Christy, I want to join the team. <laughs> do that. I'm telling you, it is the most fun you will ever have. And I mean, we work hard, but it's so worthwhile every day. Mm hmm which is probably why one of our core values is to face each day with passion and enthusiasm. And I joke with 
Dr. Ray all the time. I'm like, I'm sure sometimes you wish you wouldn't have put that in our core value because <laughs> it probably bites him more often than not. <laughs> our enthusiasm is just off the charts. <laughs> Maybe you could share with us a couple of uh, testimonials for maybe the most impact you've had on a couple of clinics, maybe, you know, customers you've helped the most. Oh, I would love to. So um, we actually, and this one's actually on our website, Dr. Mitch Malley. I will never forget being at an FCA national and his wife, PJ, was his office manager. And for years, she's like, we need to do this. We need to do this. And and she's like, yeah, 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 we're going to do this. We're going to do this. And he'd been putting it off. And she said, bottom line is this. We're going to do this. You'll commit today to doing this or I quit. I'm not coming in on Monday. So he's like, fine, 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 fine. I'll do this. But I don't know how discounting our fees is going to help us to be more profitable. And she was like, just trust me. So within 90 days, the testimonial that he sent me said, after 90 days, we're collecting ten to $15,000 more in revenue since we implemented Cairo Health USA. And the reality is, is that everybody's discounting. They're undercharging. They're way undervalued. They're not even charging what the market allows. Hence the reason why we have reimbursement issues. Um, why would insurance pay us more when we're always willing to pay, accept less? And once we get all of that situated and we show you how to see what is your market value, what you, you know, we don't tell you what to charge, but nine times out of 10, most of the um, clinics that we work with end up raising their fees and what was their actual fee becomes their Cover Health USA fee. Um, and then there's all the stuff that they haven't been charging for that they should have been charging for. So there was money they were never collecting. And now that they are. And it's mind blowing to them how something so small can have such a huge impact. Mm -hmm. One of the exercises we put them through is that just an average of $5 more per visit, less than a cup of coffee nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one gallon of gas, <laughs> but um, $5 per visit equates to 13 months of revenue and a 12 month period of time. Meaning you didn't see any more patients than you normally do. You didn't work any more hours. But what would an extra month of revenue do for you? What would it do for your bottom line? We have one doctor who went through an exercise with um, Heather on his fees. And he was just convinced that something was wrong. Um, like he couldn't understand why Cover Health USA wasn't working for him. Well, it's because they tweaked their fees without working with Heather first. So she goes through this whole process and she said, do you know your cost of doing business? Like what you have to collect every time you walk into the room. And he says, no. So she goes through this whole process with him. They pull all these reports in his software. He was making 68 cents a visit. 68 cents. And she says, show me what you're actually. So when they were looking at his actual fees, she said, your choice of fees are all wrong. This is not what we did. He, they had lowered them and they had tweaked some stuff. So she reset everything for him. And within 90 days, they were making enough money. He could start giving people raises and start paying himself again. Hmm. Yeah, that's powerful. You know, like people don't know and they just show up and they think they're doing the right thing. And uh, a lot of times people have this guilt, shame or fear when it comes to how they're earning. And uh, you're right. There's been so many uh, gray areas within chiropractic when the billing gets done or how people make money or how they pay others uh, with the resources that they attain. And, you know, I think that building some some resources for people to know, like, this is how you do it. This is the strategy. Just plug and play. And now um, people are like Mitch Malley are making more money. They are. And, you know, I tell people all the time when we talk about the fees, because it's a very sensitive topic. It's like they want to get paid, but they're embarrassed that they have to collect and charge for the services they provide. And I'll stand up in front of 200 doctors and say, before I came in today, I went and got a mani petty and I paid $75 for it. So I just want you to think that you are getting paid less than somebody who went to school to learn how to do a manicure. <laughs> you know, you don't do nails. This is health care, health care. And everybody wants to complain that all these other health care practitioners get paid and reimbursed more for exams and x-rays and therapies. Well, if, have you ever looked at their actual fees? 
right? They're not charging $50 they're charging $200. And when we look at market value, we don't look at chiropractors. We look at all healthcare providers in your zip code. So how do you see chiropractic changing or developing over the next 20 years or so? Well, I can tell you that in light of the last couple of years, one of the really big benefits that came out of all of this insanity is that people are very health and wellness focused more so than they have ever been. Um, and the reality is people pay for what they want and people want chiropractic care. Um, I think we're going to see a huge increase in students coming into chiropractic school. I actually had this conversation with my mom when I was in high school Everybody wanted to be a physical therapist. It was so hard. There was this huge surge. There was this huge campaign for more physical therapists because they had a shortage. We're getting to the point where we have a shortage. We don't have enough chiropractors to serve the patients in this country and the growing number of patients in this country. But I think chiropractic care is about to be at the top of health care. This, this is what patients want. This is what our communities want. It's definitely what our parents want. Um, for their children, mm. you know, that's where we see the biggest miracles. What, what an interview. This is awesome. I, I love the fact that you're sharing so much real actionable uh, information for people, because I know that you do education. So this is all up your wheelhouse. And I know you do a really successful webinar series too, talking about compliancy. Um, talk about that for a bit before, before we close out with you today. I will. So I have been doing this weekly webinar series for 11 years now. Um, <laughs> and it was so funny because last year I just got this great idea. I wanted to do a podcast because, you know, y'all make it look so much fun. And I was like, this would be so much better. I'm going to do a podcast. <laughs> Everybody has a podcast. I want a podcast too. So we started tapering off the webinar series so I could do a podcast. And we got overloaded with hundreds of emails, nasty emails about they didn't want it to go away. They wanted to keep the webinar series. So we are back full <laughs> fledged, no podcast. We're going to leave that to you guys, the professionals. But we talk about everything from business, um, building your business, um, using EOS and traction to structure your business for success. We talk about marketing. We talk about clinical stuff. We do CA training. It just really whatever Whatever suits my fancy at the moment. We've had some pretty amazing guests this year. I had a lot of first time guests. Uh, Lauren Brunslick, she's a micro influencer on Instagram. Um, she also has a podcast, She Slays the Day. Um, and she's funny and she just talks about um, everything that you're told in social um, marketing is wrong when it comes to chiropractic social marketing and how to do it right. Like, you don't want to go viral. We're not trying to advertise to people five states away has people that were driving business and she has a lot of great stories um today we have rosemary bachansky talking about the um the inc an incredible patient experience and she uses that from like the disney perspective like be my guest and what a difference that makes when we treat the patients coming into our office as if they're guests in our home it's exciting and it's fun and you get to meet so many cool people. Well, you'll probably never have to worry about me doing a weekly webinar series. So <laughs> I'll, let, I'll, let, I'll let you continue doing that. <laughs> well, and I will say the really cool thing is that over the years, and again, I don't know what I was thinking last year. I was like, I'm going to end on top. But we have about like 800, 900 people who register every single week. Doesn't matter what we're talking about. They're going to register. Wow. That's cool. It is cool. So who have been some of your uh, influences or heroes of, as you've uh, grown up through the years? Who inspires you? Oh, goodness. Um, wow. My mama is somebody <laughs> who's definitely influenced me. Um, bless her heart. She went from a housewife to um, a boss babe in the corporate world after my dad had a heart attack and he couldn't work anymore. And he went from, you know, working every day to being the stay at home dad, which was awesome and an awesome experience. Um, she's like one of the strongest people I know. She's like, you know, she wanted to be a mom when she grew up. And then real quick, she had to decide what else she wanted to be when she grew up. 
Um, and now that she's entering into retirement, not really. She just decided she got trained to be a hypnotherapist and she's opening up her own practice um, and she helps people with pain management. That's awesome. Holistically. So I would say definitely her. Um, in chiropractic, I've had so many great influences. Like it's just, it's almost not fair. You know, Dr. Jay Greenstein, Dr. Ray Foxworth is like my biggest mentor and cheerleader. Um, Sherry McAllister, Heidi Havoc, Carl Cleveland, Lou Sportelli. I mean, like I could hang out with the coolest people in the entire world and they <laughs> all do so much to contribute to the profession. And, you know, for somebody who didn't know a whole lot about chiropractic care was even one of those patients who was terrified of chiropractic, got hired in chiropractic and it just changed my entire life. And it's been just incredible experience. So if you could have lunch from a person from history who's no longer around, who would you pick? <sighs> Amelia Earhart. I just want to know where her plane, what happened? <laughs> I'm curious. I just want to know what happened. Not to mention like, you know, women just didn't do stuff like that. And look at her go. That's a good pick. So uh, we are now at the end of our time together. Christy, what are some web sources or resources you can give people to go check out Cairo Health USA. We got the scholarship link. Where else can you send people? Oh, I would definitely, I'll have to send you because I don't even know what it is off the top of my head, but I would definitely encourage everybody to go to the chiropractic strategic plan page to see the incredible work that is being done. Our five-year goals that are published. There's a lot of stuff in there with research and technology. Um, that it's being headed up by Dr. Heidi Havoc and Dr. Jay Greenstein. Um, so I would definitely encourage them to do go there as well. And what's the Cairo Health website? It's www.cairohealthusa.com. Awesome. Well, that's it. And I want to thank you for being our guest today. And I also want to thank you so much for being a supporter of Cairo Hustle podcast. Well, it's been my pleasure. Any excuse to hang out with you too. <laughs> yeah, Christy, uh, you are such a contributor to this amazing profession. And uh, thank you for um, doing all the amazing work you do at Dr. Ray Foxworth and uh, helping mm -hmm. these uh, 5,000 offices um, make more money and stay compliant while doing so. That's right. <laughs> all right. Well, have a great day down there in uh, beautiful Flowood, Mississippi. And uh, we'll see you guys soon, okay? Bye, y'all. Have right, a good one. Night. Thanks for listening to Cairo Hustle. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.